Toy Story made history last year as the first computer-generated full-length feature film. Uh, not, not now, Slink. I got some bad news. Bad news? Shh, shh, shh. Just gather everyone up for a staff meeting and be happy. Got it. Be happy. <laughs> staff meeting, everybody. Snake, robot, podium dude. Hey, Edge. Yes. Draw. Oh! Got me again. Etch, you've been working on that draw. Fastest knobs in the West. I uh, got a staff meeting, you guys. Uh, come on, let's go. Now, where is that? Oh. Hey, who moved my doodle pad way over here? Ah! How you doing, Rex? Ah! Were you scared? Tell me honestly. I was close to being scared that time. Oh, I'm going for fearsome here, but I just don't feel it. I think I'm just coming off as annoying. <coughs> Ow! Oh, hi, Bo. Hi. I wanted to thank you, Woody, for saving my flock. Oh, hey, it was, uh, nothing. What do you say I get someone else to watch the sheep tonight? <laughs> Hell yeah. I... Remember, I'm just a couple of blocks away. The film earned over $192 million domestically, more than $300 million internationally. It will soon be released on home video. Its technology and success have revolutionized the business of animation and opened the door to endless possibility between Hollywood and the Silicon Valley. Joining me now, Academy Award-winning director John Lasseter. He led the innovative team from Pixar Animation that brought the film to life. Also, Pixar's chairman and CEO, Steve Jobs. He introduced computers to the ordinary user when he co-founded Apple Computers. He currently heads Next Software, and I'm pleased to have both of them here to talk about what's happening in the world of animation and this marvelous relationship between film and computers producing animation. Welcome. Great Thank to have you, here. Charlie. Let me start with you. Don. Okay. Uh, as a director, mm -hmm. what what's going on? I mean, what does Pixar do that's so extraordinary? I think what Pixar does is so Pixar. Pixar. What Pixar does is so extraordinary is that we have um, taken a look at this new technology, computer animation, and, and we don't look at it as as a way to replace any of the creativity or any of the um, real art of filmmaking. We still we look at it as these are just n a great new expensive pencils. You know, that's what it says. Is it's artists using these computers as though you know an artist at Disney use a piece of paper and a pencil. And because the focus of what we do is still where it's most important, and that's with the story and the characters. I think Toy Story is a success, not because it's computer generated. It's a success because it has, a, you know, the characters of Buzz Lightyear and Woody and in the storyline that really has captivated audiences. But then, but the question still is, what did animation, what could you do because of new technology and how faster and how less expensive than the well, old way. What's interesting is I think when computers come into any Does kind it give of, you, let me interrupt myself, more creative freedom in a sense to roll right. because the technology allows you that? Well, it's two aspects of, of what you asked. Um, one, what's interesting is, is it's a very common belief that when computers come into an, a new artistic medium, that something is it's either um, you know, less expensive, takes less time, or, or it's going to replace something. You know, it's, it reminds me a lot of when photography was invented everybody thought that that painting was going to get replaced you know and that is something that that really just you know won't happen what computer animation does is it has a whole new look you know and and but but the key word is animation animation by definition is making a motion picture frame by frame by frame by frame and that doesn't change we labor over every single frame and so it's, it I worked on Toy Story for over four years the full production was two and a half years. The, the difference between um, Toy Story and Lion King or Pocahontas or yeah, Hunchback. What is the difference? The difference is that we used a lot less people. Well, that's my point. It made it more efficient to do. Yeah. It was, and, and, and also, we were a much smaller studio. We were kind of, you know, uh, a leaner sort of Does group. Does it look any better uh, on the screen? Well, that is something for the viewer to, to, to choose. It looks different. I'm not going to say it whether it's different. It's more dimensional. The, 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 what, what excited me about this medium, I was trained as a traditional animator. I love Disney animation. I love, you know, Car Warner Brothers cartoons. That's what I grew up on, you know. And, and I got really excited about uh, animation. I was trained 
as a, as a traditional animator, drawing, design, all that. But what excited me when I first saw the co my first computer animation back in about 1981 was that it was three-dimensional. You, you were able to create a world that was totally dimensional. You were able to move in and around objects which you had never been able to do in hand-drawn animation. And, and, and so therefore, it, that, that, that got me so excited. And I think what Toy Story was, was different on is what, what made it unique is that we chose a subject matter, toys being alive, that really lent itself beautifully to the medium. How did you, sir? <laughs> what have I got to do with this? All? Exactly. <clears throat> I mean, you know, you're a guy who founds high-tech companies and yeah. tries to make another billion dollars. Yeah, well, I don't think of myself that way, but I know you don't. I but wish well, I could, no, no, I no, wish no, stop, 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 stop. Yeah. What do you, how do you think of yourself? Um, I mean, after Apple, after Next, how do you think of yourself? You know, the things that I've done in my life, I think the things we do now at Pixar, these are team sports. You know, they're not something that one person does. We've got, ex you have to have an extraordinary team because these are, these are, um, you're trying to climb a mountain with a whole party of people, a lot of stuff to bring up the mountain. So one person can't do it. Um, and I first got involved in this when I heard about this incredible group of um, computer graphics specialists that George Lucas had assembled at Lucasfilm that he wanted to sell. And so I went up there and saw what they were doing, and I met uh, the, the, the leader of this group, uh, D Dr. Ed Catmull. And Ed told me about his dream, which was to make the first computer animated feature film someday, and showed me uh, what this team was working on. And I was... Uh, I was blown away. Uh, I I'd spent a lot of time in computer graphics with the Macintosh and the laser writer and stuff, but this was way beyond any, anything I'd seen. And so I bought into that dream, both, both spiritually, if you will, and, and financially, and we bought the computer division from, from George and incorporated it as Pixar. John was there from the very start. Uh, Ed was there, and we were joined by other people along the way. And, and uh, it took us 10 years to do it. But what we, was so hard? Oh. There were <laughs> good it, question, huh, John? You know, yeah, that's yeah. a good question. It's um, it took us a long time to build the technical foundation yeah. to do this stuff. We were pioneering every step of the way. We, Pixar invented all this stuff, but as John says, we don't view ourselves as a technology company. Our, our product is content. We're an entertainment company, and all this technology really is just in the service of the storytelling, right. the yeah. service of the creative yeah. people. And, and computer animation is even a little bit of a misnomer. The computers don't do the animation. They do the drawing. And they crank on these drawings for like, you know, three hours by one of the fastest computers in the world, which is why the, the drawings are three-dimensional. But the animators act. You know, I've watched John and his team work, and they, they are the heart and soul of the characters. They do all the acting, not the computers. Okay, but I mean, I'm going to just make sure I understand what you're saying. I mean, I would think that people... I mean, when I was telling you about my interest in what in the world's going on and where the future's headed, and, yes. and you said to me, that's not what we're about. And you, what the point you wanted to make is that we're about entertainment, and we're about technology and the service of the entertainment that we create, right? We're about telling, we're about putting stories into the culture. That's what we're, we're about telling stories. And, you know, and you've got a different paintbrush, and you've got a different canvas than everybody else does, or it's a more advanced, it's a better, it's a more something. I, you know, I'll let John speak to this, but I know a lot of people at Pixar, our heroes are Disney. I mean, look at what they've done. I've got, we've all got young children, and our, our kids watch these Disney films, and they learn a lot from these Disney films, you know, about good and evil and right and wrong, and, you know, they're entertained all it's, along the it's way. It's a great storytelling It's incredible vehicle. what they've done. Yeah. What's the, before I ask you my next question, what's the biggest ever success in animation? Um, Huge. Lion King. Lion King. Lion King far and broke away. all the records. Yeah, yes. far, far, far and away. away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, um, and then uh, Aladdin is right after that, and yeah. then Toy Story. And there's a lot of difference in terms of the way Lion King was made and the way Toy Story was made. Yeah. But a and, world of difference. And the, yes, and no. It, and nothing different about what came out of the head of the animator. Right. It's, the, the process is very much the same in the development of the story. Um, animation is very different than live action filmmaking. Because in live action filmmaking, the uh, director starts with a script and then, you know, blocks out the shot, goes to the set and, and films it from all different angles. You know, covers the scene 10, 20 different times, close-ups, long shots, two shots, so on. Takes all that footage, goes into the editing room and makes the film there. You know, it pieces it together, juxtaposes things. 
edits the film. It's always the post-production, after the fact. In animation, the actual production of the footage is so time-consuming, therefore expensive. It's really the time is why it's expensive. We, we can't really afford to do a, a scene ten different ways. You know, we have to do it just every frame has to count. So what we do is in, in the story development, you pretty much edit your film in advance. Now what I mean by that is you start with the script, and then what we do is we do storyboards, sort of a visual Old script. Old-fashioned storyboards or new? new? Old-fashioned, yeah. you know, with storyboards. One of the things at Pixar is that we don't want to replace, we don't want to throw everything in, uh, in the, the animation filmmaking process out the window and replace it with new technology. We use the technology where, where it's going to make the film better or make the film, you know, different. Storyboarding, there's nothing better than a piece of paper and a pencil and a, and a, a four by eight piece of cellulite. You got no story, you got no film. Yeah, and you got no story. So then you, you do a story reel. You cut that onto film. And in our case, we use a, a computer there. We use a nonlinear editing system that's very common in the industry now. But it makes it so that we can look at those still drawings with scratch dialogue, scratch music, sit back, watch it on, on a big projection video, and, and that film will tell us if it's working or not. If it's working in, in our story reels, when we animate it and put the colors to it, it's going to work even better. If it's not working in the story reels, the animation won't save it. In essence, it lets us beta test and iterate our film before we make it. Totally different than live action filmmaking. And we believe it's one of the reasons that the, the, um, the hit rate can be substantially different. That's, you know, and that, that process we're talking about really isn't much different than, than Disney did Snow White with. Right. You know? But you look, you know, that's one of the things is, is that Disney and Pixar, we labor over the stories. You know, I mentioned I worked four years on Toy Story. The first year and a half was story development alone. You know, we worked so hard because the most important thing to me in creation of, story, of Toy Story was to make a film that, that of course, kids will like because it's all about toys. I mean, most kids look at it as a documentary, you know. Um, and, but the parents are going to like it. And then the, the adults without kids would like it. And then teenagers. I have a 16-year-old uh, son named Joey, and he was one of my most important test audiences. Because I... How old? 16. 16. And, and, um, and he... W it was so important for me that I showed him stuff constantly to see if it was cool or not, you know. Because, you know, toy, uh, teenagers tend to not like a lot of things. And so it was important for us to... to if we can get the teenage you audience... You tested it with Joey. I did. All right. Take a look at this. This is another clip from Toy Story, an illustration of what we're talking about. We're not that far from the spaceport. The door. It's open. We're free. What if you don't know what's out there? I'll tell you what. Ah! Ah! They're going to eat us, Buzz. Do something quick. Shield your eyes. It's not working. I recharged it before I left. It should be good for you, idiot. You're a toy. Use your karate chop action. Hey, hey, how you doing there? Stop that. Back, back, you savages, back. What are you stopping? Sorry, guys, but dinner's canceled. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. <gasps> okay, before I leave Toy Story, which we've talked about a lot here, how, how do you see this being applied to other whatever? Think freely for me. I mean, you've got a pretty good eye for the future. Um, well, you know, one of the things, this stuff's really hard. It takes us four years to make these films, and um, we'll get them out more frequently by overlapping them, but four years is a pretty big investment in these things. But when it works, it can be phenomenal. Um, you know, Snow White is 60 years old. Who do you know that hasn't seen Snow White? I, I, I know people on most continents, and I don't think I know one person that hasn't seen Snow White. So the ability for these things to live for 60 or even 100 years is amazing. And, that, and that's very different than the technology world that I've come from. You know, most of the technology products we do, Apple IIs, Macintoshes, you name it, they, they tend to... obsolete in 18 months yeah. and shrink well, to six months well, past. You're lucky if they live 10 to 15 years. I mean, it's, it's very rare exception. So, and then they become sort of part of the sediment layer for things to build upon. These things can live for 100 years. And um, so it, it's very different. And we're not competing against you know, a Microsoft or another company. We're competing against, can we make a great film that people love?
that's what we compete against. And so every day when we go to work, we're saying, you know, how do we make a... All right, but I can't, I mean, look, my two questions quickly, yeah. because I, one is, why should I come to Pixar if I'm a great animator? Yes. And if I've got a great story idea, why should I come to you? Oh, three, I think. Uh, three reasons. One, um, Pixar is a place more than anywhere else in the world that, that, that um, they can get creative satisfaction. We try to give these artists a project that they can be proud of for the rest of their careers. That's one. That's a big thing. I know because I've worked in a lot of places where I was working on, on, on kind of garbage and it's hard to work. Secondly, in, in working with these people, I try so hard, even if it's the smallest task, to, to give them a little bit of creative ownership, to let them figure out how to do it. I don't, I don't tell people how to do it. And so that is a really important reason. And the most important thing is at Pixar we have a lot of fun. You know, and it comes, it, it, I think it shows in the thing, in, in, in the film. But I could see, when you think about in, you know, in, I remember in, in they, there's not much political satire on American television. Mm -hmm. Some political satire can be done in animation in an interesting way because you can use characters. You could do this if you had a good, if you had a good storyteller, mm -hmm. you had great writers. Mm -hmm. You could probably do it faster and quicker and more interestingly. Well, political satire is interesting. It's what Steve was talking about. It, it, it quickly becomes dated. Oh, I see. So therefore, you don't have the pay. You know, what we try to do is make stories that, that will last on. That, that, you oh, know, that's why the, the choice of all the, the existing toys in Toy Story. There's Mr. Potato Head. There's Etch-a-Sketch, right, right, Magic right. 8 Ball. It's, it's the things that we had right. as kids that kids still have today. And you don't have to play any residuals actors either, do you? Uh, Mr. Potato Head, you know, it was a tough, tough deal to negotiate with him. No, I'm just kidding. I had you there. Yeah, I know. I, I, thought, well, I thought maybe somebody owned that. Um, well, they do, but they were very good. Why has the stock... Mm -hmm. Has the stock come down? Well, we went out at the IPO at $22 a share, right. and I didn't check the price today, but it's probably somewhere around $17, $18 a share. Yeah. And uh, I think part of that... Well, I don't, know how, I don't know why the stock market does what it does. So that, that's first answer. Second answer is, I think a lot of people thought we were a technology company. And we maybe didn't do a good enough job explaining to people, no, we're an entertainment company. We're not a quarter-to-quarter -quarter earnings company. We, we're building assets that are sort of annuities into the future. And um, so I think we're slowly, people are slowly coming around to that, understanding how difficult this is to do. You know, since Snow White was released in 1928, which was the first animated feature film ever, 60 years ago, every major studio has tried to break into this business. And until last December, Disney was the only studio that had ever made a feature animated film that was a blockbuster of $100 million or more in domestic box office. And last December, Pixar became the second studio in history to do that. So it's a very, very um, rarefied ability to make these products. And uh, I think Pixar is really able to do this quite well. And what happens after the contract with the three picture deal with Disney goes? You know, uh, we love working with Disney. It's a fantastic partnership. So, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll put something together to keep making films with them. Okay. I, mean, I want to talk about the business, overall business, which you know something about the computer business, too. Um, does it bring, how do you feel about what's happened to Apple? You know, all the work we did at Apple lives on. Um, it lives on in the Macintosh, and now it lives on in Windows 95. Yeah, of so, course it does. But, uh, yeah, but I mean, that's interesting to say, and, and clearly it does. Yeah. But it's Windows 95, it's Microsoft, it's not Apple. Right, but it's still the work. It's still the innovation. So did it have to turn out the way it did? I, I, it's hard to predict these things. I mean, yeah, come on, Apple's, Steve, you've thought about this. This is not a subject that's unfamiliar to you. Yeah, it is. It's, it's sort of ancient history to me right now. I, have, I don't really think about this stuff anymore. And Apple and Microsoft duke it out, and Netscape and Microsoft duke it out. And to me, it's a spectator sport. At this point, do you care about it? Do you have any interest in it? Does, um, does the ideas that the, does the internet mean anything to you? Do oh, you, sure, the internet's. I mean, have, I look at it. Do you use it? Do you care I, about it? I and, use it every day, and I do care about it, and I think it's it's phenomenal what's happening. The internet is clearly the most exciting thing in the computer business. But right now, I look at the computer business mostly as a consumer at Pixar, you know, because we are one of the largest consumers of computing in the world. And um, we use it to make our films. So, yeah, but, but also, I mean, I hear you, and I'm, yeah. you clearly, I mean, if you understand marketing very, very well. That was your genius in the beginning, yes? You understood the concept and you understood marketing. Uh -huh. 
You'll grant me that. Question is that when you look at, at, at Pixar, you seem to say, be saying to me and to you and John together, as a, I w my company's misunderstood. It's not a computer company. It's a filmmaking company, you know? Right. I mean, that, and that's sort of a, you realize that in terms of some maybe truth, but also in terms of some marketing savvy, mm -hmm. we've got to make sure that we've got to get this word out that this saying is about entertainment and it's not about computer. We don't want to be right. characterized like everybody else, mm -hmm. you know, and part of your effort and part of your reason for appearing here and et cetera. Um, you know, I think we definitely want to get that word out, but I have this incredible confidence that the word will get out. And as we make more films, we'll demonstrate that by our results. So it's, it, what, the interesting thing is when these films take four years to make, and they last for 60 or 100 years, you start to develop a longer focal length point of view than just the next six okay, months. But here you are. You went from Apple, where you made a lot of money, and then right. Scully came in, and you left, and blah, 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 blah. And then you went to Next, which was never quite as much as what people thought it might be. Right. But those, those it's coming back now. Well, I know. I understand that. I do. And at the, now, but your, your head seems to be into filmmaking, but you started this. You went to see George Lucas mm -hmm. because you're out there as an entrepreneur looking for ideas. Right. Right? Um, and so all of a sudden you get I involved was... in this idea, and now you're saying, I'm in the entertainment business. I did a good job of brainwashing. Yeah, are you sure did? Yeah, I was going to say. You really I'm did a number proud. on I'm very this proud guy. of my you product over there. <laughs> I mean, he bought it, didn't he? Story and uh, He believes. He's a believer. Story and character. He's a believer. I know he is. Is he? Yeah, right. I got he's into this because of the technology at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It excited you? Oh, it blew me no, away. I mean, we yeah. have more PhDs work on Toy Story than any film in history. I mean, tremendous computer science. That's what drew me into it initially. Mm -hmm. But you're, John's right. He educated me that what we are really about is storytelling. He didn't well, use the word educate, Steve. He said brain brain And it's been 10 years. <laughs> educate. It educate's you know. better, isn't it? <laughs> it's been 10 years. Yeah. So, so when, it, when, I mean, when, the, when the, the, day, the day that that stock went public, because it's been 10 years. Pixar because stock. You, yeah, yeah, Pixar. Because you put, I don't know, what, about 50, 100. How much of your own money did you put into it at the beginning? A little over 50 million. 50 million. All of a sudden, because it's the way to take notice, not because you needed a billion dollars. Uh -huh. All of a sudden, after 10 years, there was a recognition by the marketplace mm -hmm. that this had been a wise, fruitful, productive fruition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, am I going to come back and interview you in five years and find out you're in some other business and you're not in the entertainment business, you found some other well to go fishing? You know, I tend to stay where, where I, I start until somebody kicks me out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. Great to have you here. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. Pleasure. Thank you. Uh, we'll be right back. Don't go away. <laughs>